If your family has grown or you're simply looking for more space, stability and comfort, the Weekender series from Arvor fits the bill perfectly. The beauty lies in the versatility of the design. Not only are they perfect for sunny days out on the water, but they also have the luxury for overnight stays. These boats are relatively high sided and very beamy, but it gives it a lot of room inside. There's two of us sitting in here and there's still tons of room for other guests. They're also very easy to drive. I've got a nice commanding view. I can see everything outside of the front windscreen, which has no split in it at all. And I've got a nice side window view as well. I can either drive seated on the bolster as I am now with my feet up on the footrest, flip the bolster down, sit down properly, or stand like this. All three are very comfortable and you still have a nice view around the boat. The steering wheel itself, turns from side to side very easily, making parking simple, and the throttle is very smooth to apply, so there's no lurching forwards accidentally when you apply a little bit of speed to the boat. All in all, it's a very comfortable driving position. The dash layout is very simple to see and gives you at-a-glance readouts for pretty much everything. Directly ahead of me here, above the steering wheel, I've got the readouts for the engine and speed. I've also got an anchor windlass control located at high and right, and a bow thruster below that. The sounder, the radio here, and the stereo located on the lower left of the dashboard is a tick the box package available through Arvor. The nine inch Simrad's very easy to see, offers chart plotter and sounder capabilities as well. The trim tabs, which are also standard on this package, allow you to even out the boat. I haven't used them a lot, I haven't felt the need to. There's also trim available with the outboard engine and that's been more than enough today. But if you have a lot of people on board or a lot of gear and you need to even out your ride because the boat's listing or tilting to one side, it's a nice, easy to reach control and it'll help you flatten out the ride for your guests. These boats are perfect for this style of entertaining. We've got a nice large cockpit, wraparound seating, and it's protected by this extendable awning. The drop-in table is a nice touch and a great place to put some food, but it also can lower further and turn this area into a sunbed, the perfect place to while away the afternoon. Whether you're overnighting or just entertaining, there's a fantastic area to prepare all your food. We've got a lovely sink here with a lid on top, which converts it into a very handy bench space. A single burner stove will have you cooking up a Chef Ramsay style meal, and a small fridge down here will accommodate all your food and drinks for a weekend away. These push style fasteners on these drawers, make sure they don't slide out while you're underway as well. And there's plenty of storage in and around of this facility. It makes for a perfect area to prepare all your meals. The cabin has lots of headroom and is very wide, which provides enormous amounts of space. The sliding door, a floor to ceiling style, provides a lovely view out the back if you are inside, but also stacks to one side, leaving a wide entry point. Once you get inside the cabin, there's a lovely dining area which converts into another bed, giving you a third option should you have friends staying overnight. There's also a lovely view out the side window. To convert it into a bed, pull out this leg here and drop it down onto these lips and throw the cushion on top. It's that easy. The main cabin is located in the bow and there's plenty of space here for two adults to sleep very comfortably. There's also a handy nook here for your wallets and mobile phones with light streaming in via port windows on either side. For airflow, there's a hatch in the roof too. To lock yourself off from the world, there's a curtain that slides across and it creates a nice little sanctuary for the adults. Located underneath the dining table is the second berth or second sleeping area. It's quite long, reasonably wide. You could at a pinch get two kids in here and it'd almost feel like a cubby house. There's recesses up against this side to stop stuff from rolling around. And again, it's got a neat little curtain assembly to shut you off from the world. It's pretty comfortable. I could quite easily sleep here myself. 
In between the two berths is the final piece of the puzzle. There's a pump toilet here with a fully closing door, which gives you a nice little bit of privacy. It also offers you versatility to stay for extended nights out on the water and still be comfortable. There is no shower here. There is one of those located in the back of the cockpit where you can hose yourself off after you get out of the water. Down here is reserved solely for the toilet. Now, if the 755 Weekender isn't quite enough boat for you, there is also an 855 Weekender. And my first impressions are that it's a much larger overall package, despite only being about 1.2 meters overall in length longer. The cockpit here is much more roomy. There's more space in and around the lounge. You still have the table you can drop in or you can turn it into a sun pad. Up this side or the starboard side, we've got a nice wide walkway, which gives you access to the bow. The whole cabin is pushed to the left and that allows you to create more room internally within the cabin by actually moving it across to one side of the boat and having a walkway only up one side. There's a small access on the port, but generally wouldn't be used at all. The entry point into the 855 cabin is much the same as the 755 with the door stacking to the port side, allowing a nice wide entry point. On the starboard side here, you've got your food preparation area or bench top which is a hinge lid, also covering your two burner gas stove and sink. Down below that, we've got a fridge and we've got a microwave as well. So the extra room is allowing extra appliances to make it more comfortable for longer periods of time. On the port side, you've got this fantastic couch here, which is currently set up in a C shape, which is very handy for guests. So they can sit inside, talk to you whilst you're motoring or driving somewhere, but it also converts into a bed can be used as a dining area or switched around with the backrest changed to the other side to create a forward facing seat. A very versatile arrangement indeed. The accommodation here on the 855 is enormous. The layout is much the same though as a 755 with a large forward berth. In this case, you've got an extendable bed which gives you a lot of room still to walk around. You've got hanging space here on this side and you've got some nice shelving that runs either side of the bed as well for all your little bits and pieces. The extra room in the 855 allows for a second berth that is again enormous. It extends well beyond where my legs will reach and it's also very wide, perfect for two adults. It also features a closing door. If you had children or multiple children, they could also sleep down here. It's probably capable of fitting three or four of them, no problem at all. More space equals just that little bit more luxury. And in this case, the 855 has a toilet, but it also has a shower. So you can either wash your hands in the sink or pop this extendable, flexible, faucet up there and have a shower inside as well. It allows you to stay out on the water for just that little bit longer in a little bit more comfort. Well I thought the 755 had a pretty commanding view of the water but I must say the 855 is even better again. You're well up high, you can see more than everything in front of you and out to the sides. I also like the addition of this sliding door which allows nice airflow through the cabin, something I felt was lacking in the smaller boat. The dashboard arrangement isn't that dissimilar. You've got your gauges ahead of the steering wheel. We've got the Simrad nine inch sounder and chart plotter. And we've got switch panels, anchor windlass, bow thruster, and also trim tabs. The throttle again is easy to reach and nicely positioned and very smooth. And in terms of where I'm driving from, I'm sitting on the bolster again with my feet up on one of the two footrests that are located down at my feet. I could stand, but I'd be a little bit lower, and I personally prefer being a little higher so I can see more. All in all, it's a very comfortable driving position and probably marginally better than its smaller brother. Both the 755 and 855 are powered by outboard Mercury engines which turn in surprising performance and get them moving along at quite a speed. One thing people moving up from a trailer boat to something larger like this will appreciate is the familiarity of the outboard power. Both these boats are the ideal step up from a trailer boat, which simply can't match them for stability, comfort or luxury. The 755 is perfect for a couple or a small family 
who like to get out and enjoy a little bit of comfort during a day on the water and may occasionally spend a night on the boat. The 855 is perfect for couples who entertain, need a little bit of extra room, but particularly for those who will spend extended periods aboard overnighting as they go. 